Lecturers do not teach this topic at university levels. Uh, this topic, in my view, it is a very, very important topic for uh, but, uh, or you can you may be able the reinforcing detailing in a, in a drawing. So, this is my topic today, and I, I will try my best to explain each and every component of this topic. Presenting to you people is the bond in which and development ends. In my view, it is the most important topic, and uh, most of time the professors, lecturers do not teach this topic at university levels. Uh, this topic, in my view, it is a very, very important topic for uh, engineering students. And I think it is a very, very important topic relating to the fields. Because if you know about uh, the bond, the encourage and development thing, so in my view, it is very easy and simple for you to uh, to provide, uh, or you can, you may be able the reinforcing detailing in a, in a drawing. So this is my topic today. In my I will try my best to explain each and every component of this topic in full detail. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, alaikum, dear students. My name is Bahaulahan, and in today lecture I will want to explain more about the uh, the topic which I which I today am present presenting to you people is the bond in which and development ends. In my view, it is the most important topic and uh, most of time the professors, lecturers do not teach this topic at university levels. Uh, this topic, in my view, it is a very, very important topic for uh, engineering students and I think it is a very, very important topic relating to the fields. Because if you know about uh, the bond, the encourage and development thing, so in my view, it is very easy and simple for you to uh, to provide, uh, or you can, you may be able the reinforcing detailing in a, in a drawing. So this is my topic today. In my I will try my best to explain each and every component of this topic in full detail. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, my dear students. In present lecture, uh, I would like to uh, explain about the bond encourages and development plan. In my view, it is a very very important topic for civil engineers to know about what is bond, what is entrage, and what is development length. It is a very very important topic in that uh, in the design perspective. It is very very important because uh, most of the time we can see whenever we we we, we make a design. So after designing beams, slabs and columns, we have to prepare the detailing. So what does detailing mean is that we, we basically showing the various steels in beams, columns and their cutting points, cut up distance and uh, we show the splices 
are left is left of the of the cutting balls. So in joints, basically, whenever pain, column joints, pain wall joints. So these are the regions where uh, we have to provide certain ties. You can say stirrups and uh, uh, like the one uh, you can see in this diagram that uh, how these things can be um, can be done like this is the in this diagram you can see that the beam is coming in this corner and how this bar is uh, hooked here okay and how these stirrups these extra uh, stirrups and these ties are provided so in such case in such uh, kind of joints slabs uh, like things we have to provide certain provisions according to ACI for ACI uh, uh, bridge, uh, explains some kind some certain kinds of uh, restrictions some code the specifications and we must know about those restrictions those codes uh, those code uh, restrictions and uh, uh, we have to provide these uh, linkages these cut up bars mm, these uh, kind of uh, detailing according to the aci code provisions so basically uh, like the one you can uh, see these cut up bars like this this one so i would like to give you an example of that cut-ups which are right over here this is you can see this is uh, this is the positive reinforcement and this is also the positive reinforcement so you can see this this steel bars that these steel bars are cut at these uh, points so why these bars are cut up and uh, what is the you know why these bars are cut ups right here and why these bars are extended here why these bars are hooks here uh, why these are cut there why these are uh, continuous here so basically you can see that uh, this is the negative steel reinforcement so you see that how these bar is continuous these are cut there and this is over continued so all these detailing are necessary once whenever we are uh, whenever we are designing a complete structure, uh, slab, beam, etc., so we have to provide these kind of detailing. And if you don't know about development, then if you don't know about hops, standard hops, if you don't know about anchorage, if you don't know about bonds, so you you can't able to explain these things. You can't able to understand these things. And from one certain point of view which I would like to explain that most of the uh, professors lecturers they left this topics that they, they, they uh, don't give time to this in universities so basically from that perspective I am uh, I select this topic here that I would like to explain this, the each and every component of this topic because it is important it is very very important even for our side point of view because uh, if you go to the sites and you you uh, you search out the drawings, you see the drawings, you will see these kind of things. So so many times these practical things do not adjust it. So the site as a site engineer, you you are the person which are who are responsible for these kind of things, these labs, these books, and you have to check these things. Uh, that whether it is uh, it fulfilled those criteria, ACA criteria or not. So from that point of view, I would like to explain this topic. Sir. So starting from uh, introduction, in this lecture I would like to explain this topic from three relevant books that are the most famous books of uh, uh, reinforcement concrete design. That is the one is the Mac Gregor book. The other is uh, Nelson book that is one one famous book amongst one one of the famous books and the other is the JXC MC Cormac book. 
so from all these books i will uh, i will explain this topic that how uh, these things are handled or these kind of topics are presented in these three books so basically we will uh, we will explain those uh, those terminology and uh, those uh, technical terms uh, we will also use some some uh, certain times the design sci design manuals so this is a design manuals you can see that uh, that is around about 95 so this this can be uh, this the, the modern versions of these sci manuals nowadays are available and uh, you can you can see uh, you can uh, like this one sci 31 at 11 2018 round about because these manuals are uh, these manuals are renewed after every 3 years so this is uh, 2011 31 at 11 manual so whenever you are detailing whenever you are uh, cutting bars whenever you are providing laps whenever you are providing joints can see that uh, the code there are four restrictions so you will see these c psi factors you can see these ktr factors so all those uh, these psi factors are uh, lambda factors how we can select these these kind of uh, what this is development plan so these formula you will see and these are selected these parameters are selected from uh, these design manuals so therefore you must know about these design manuals which will helpful to you people uh, and you must know about them that what does it means and how these can uh, work so this is our topic today for presentation what is bond anchorage and development plan uh this is the nelson book and uh, this is the 15th edition and uh, i think so i would like to show you this book this is this is the nelson book and uh, you can see it's six point you can see like this this is uh, david donnell and Char, uh, charles w dolan arthur h nelson 15 edition and uh, this is a very wonderful book which is very helpful for civil engineer uh, and so many topics are covered in this uh, book so the topic which i will would like to present um, in this lecture is bond anchorages and development plan i would like to explain these topics most time in urdu as well as in english so basically to better understand um, by almost all of the students okay so what is the fundamentals of flexural bar whenever we are dealing with anchorages development lands we must know about the term bar basically what is a bar bar hoti hai kya cheez theek hai jab bhi hum bar ki baat karte hain to hum bar se hamari murad kya hoti hai basically बांध जो होती है जो फंडामेंटल है बांध की वो ये है कि देखिए कंक्रीट को जब भी हम डिज़ाइन करते हैं तो उसमें हम मुख्तलिफ एजम्पन यूज़ करते हैं ठीक है उसमें एक एजम्पन ये होती है कि जो कंक्रीट जो मटेरियल है इट इज यू कैन से इट इज होली यूज फॉर कंप्रेशन फोर्सेज Not for tensile forces, ठीक है इसका मेन मकसद जो होता है कंक्रीट का वो कंप्रेशन फोर्सेज लेना होता है लेना लेना है टेंजाइल फोर्सेज जो होती हैं उसको हम बर्दाश्त करते हैं थ्रू री एनफोर्समेंट ठीक है उसके अंदर हम री एनफोर्समेंट डाल देते हैं और हम कहते हैं कि जितनी टेंशन प्रोड्यूस होती है दैट टेंशन विल बी टेकन बाई द री एनफोर्समेंट while the compressive compressive forces which is developing in the concrete is taken over by uh, concrete so one of the most important question which is uh, you can say uh, create in mind 
کہ کس طرح کنکریٹ کے اندر ٹینشن پیدا ہوتی ہے وہ سٹیل لیتا ہے ٹھیک ہے نا کنکریٹ سے یعنی کہ کس طرح ٹرانسفر ہوتی ہے کنکریٹ سے پورس سٹیل میں کس طرح ٹرانسفر ہوتی ہے سو یو مسٹ نو اباؤٹ دیٹ گائے واٹ از ہو از دیٹ گائے ہو از رسپانسبل فار ٹرانسفرنگ دوز کنکریٹ ٹینزائل پروسیس ٹو دا سٹیل اینڈ دیٹ گائے وچ از رائٹ ان فرنٹ آف می دیٹ از مور یو نو بارن یو وہ کریکٹرسٹکس آپ سمجھ لے کنکریٹ کی یو وہ پراپرٹی سمجھ لے کنکریٹ کی یا وہ آپ اس کو کنکریٹ کی وہ اسٹرینتھ سمجھ لے جو کیا کرتی ہیں جو کہ کنکریٹ کی سے تنزائل فورسز کو سٹیل پہ کنورٹ کرتی ہیں ٹھیک ہے یعنی کہ یہ ان بٹوین سٹیل اور کنکریٹ کے درمیان پروڈیوس ہوتی ہیں ٹھیک ہے نا جس کے ذریعے سے یو کین سے جس کے ذریعے سے فار ایگزامپل فار ایگزامپل فار ایگزامپل آپ کے پاس ایک بار ہے سٹیل بار ہے ٹھیک ہے اور اس کے اراؤنڈ جو ہے وہ کنکریٹ ہے ٹھیک ہے اب ظاہر ہے یہ آپ کا کنکریٹ ہے ٹھیک ہے تو اس بار کو بیسیکلی کنکریٹ نے کنفائن کیا ہوا ہوتا ہے ٹھیک ہے دس کنکریٹ بیسیکلی کنفائن دس سرٹن لینڈ آف سٹیل سو وٹ ول ہیپن ون یو اپلائی دا ٹینزائل فورسز ٹو کنکریٹ اوکے سو ایز دا کنکریٹ اینڈ اسٹیل آر بانڈیڈ ٹو ایچ ادر دس ٹینزائل فورس ڈیو ٹو دا فورس آف بانڈ آف کنکریٹ وچ از رائٹ ٹوور ایئر ود اسٹیل کنور دس آر ٹرانسفر دس ٹینشن ٹو دس کائنڈ آف اسٹیل so that whole force transferred to the steel and now steel is responsible steel is attacking that tensile force and it will comes to its end okay so yehi wajah hoti hai ki phir steel jo hoti hai wo tensile forces le liye ab concrete se tensile forces ٹرانسفر ہوئے تھرو بانڈ یہ اس کے درمیان ہوتی ہے بانڈ کے فورسز ابھی جو بانڈ ہوتا ہے بیسیکلی یہ مختلف اس کو مختلف فیکٹرز متاثر کرتی ہے فیکٹرز ہم بعد میں ایکسپلین کریں گے لیکن یو مسٹ نو کہ یہ جو ٹرانسفر ہوتی ہے تو اسٹیل یہ اسٹیل سروس کے اوپر جو ایک قسم کی طرح کی فریکشن ہوتی ہے کچھ کیمیکلز ہوتی ہیں جس کو ہم ظاہر سیمنٹس اور وہ بیسٹ ہوتی ہیں تو وہ اس کے ساتھ ہوتی ہیں اس کے علاوہ ہم بعض اوقات اسٹیل کے اینڈس پہ جو وہ بیسیکلی ہم ہوکس دیتے ہیں تو ہوکس کا ایک اور وہ ہے ایک اس کا ایک اور اور وہ ہے اس کی ڈیٹیل کچھ اور ہے اس کی فنکشن ہے کچھ اور ہے لیکن بیسیکلی نیچر اسٹیج یہ جو کنورٹ ہوتی ہیں لائک وی ول پرووائڈ سم ریپس اندر اسٹیل سرفس تو اس اسٹیل سرفس کے اوپر جو ریپس ہوتی ہیں اس کی وجہ سے بھی کچھ بیرنگ اسٹریسز پروڈیوس ہوتی ہیں اور وہ جو ٹینشن کی جو ٹرانسفرنگ ہے ٹو دا اسٹیل وہ ہوتی ہے بیسیکلی سو اس کی وجہ سے ایک بانڈ ایک طرح کی یو کین سے ایڈہیسو فورسز ڈیولپ ہوتی ہے اوور دا بار لینتھ اینڈ اس کی وجہ سے وہ فورس یہاں پہ منتقل ہوتی ہے اب یہ جو بانڈ ہے اس کا ایک بہت بڑا رول ہے اس کا ایک بہت بڑا رول ہوتا ہے ان چیزوں کو ڈیزائن کرنے میں ان چیزوں کو یعنی کہ ٹینشن فورس لینے میں اس کا ایک بہت بڑا رول ہوتا ہے وداؤٹ دیٹ بانڈ فورسز اگر آپ کی بانڈ فورسز یو ہے سو یو کین سے کہ پھر آپ کی سلیپیج ہوتی ہے یعنی کہ پھر آپ کی سٹیل جو ہوتی ہے دے کانٹ کیپیبل آف ٹیکنگ دوز کائنڈ آف فورسز ٹھیک ہے سو یہی چیز یہاں پہ نیلسن جو ہے بیسیکلی وہ ایکسپلین کرتا ہے کہ دا ایزمشن ہاں یہ بھی یاد رکھے یہی بانڈ ہے نا وہ نیلسن یہاں پہ اسی کی ایکسپلینیشن کرتا ہے یو کین سے دیٹ دس از اسمبلی سپورٹڈ بی مین اٹ ہیز اے ری انفورسنگ بار سو اف دا بار از you can say it is greased 
and it is plain steel and there is no friction in between concrete and steel. Once you apply the force, the, the bar will keeping its whole length as the concrete beam will bend. So it will slip like air. So it won't be bent. But when it grease na ho, plan na ho, or risk it in or wo ho, basically the, the friction force is here in between steel and concrete then there is a kind of bound forces are generated and due to that bound forces due to that uh, friction forces you can say so the, the concrete beam is not capable to bend okay because the tension is taken now by the steel so, the bond forces are very important and you must know about the bond force. Okay? So, ye, it is, it is, it is uh, just only at the initial stage, pe basically, we have explained that before you can say it just the development stage of concrete, whenever steel is starting using in concrete, so in that time there is plan reinforcement there is no ribs you can say uh, there is no uh, deformed steel in that era so basically what will happen there will be the adhesion or you can say the bound force is due to uh, weak chemical adhesion and the mechanical friction between the steel and concrete so the bond force will due to these two kind of guys okay? so whenever these frictions and these adhesions fail you will see the slip of the steel you will see the slip of the steel. So interlocking actions and roughness of the concrete will do work to produce bond forces. But once these forces is uh, finished, you can say these forces are weak. So the slipping, slipping of the steel will occur. So to capture that problem, what they did at that era, they introduced the hooks. So hooks basically, you can say hooks are produced at the ends of those uh, of those bars like uh, the one you can see okay, if, if you have uh, a beam over here okay for example you have a beam over here okay and uh, you have a steel component over here okay? so this is your steel so the friction forces are just you can say just creating like here so the friction and the locking forces uh, over the length of the bar. If these friction forces, if these interlocking forces of the concrete fails, then they, they they think about it that how to how to how to uh, tightly uh, how to tightly produce this steel in the concrete. It means. कि किस तरह हम इस स्टील को कंक्रीट के अंदर टाइटन करें किस तरह हम इस कंक्रीट स्टील को कंक्रीट के अंदर आ, इसको इसको यू कैन से इस किस तरीके से हम कंक्रीट के साथ एक जान बना दें ताकि कंक्रीट फॉर द पर्पस दैट इट विल टेक द फोर्सेस ऑफ दैट अ टेंसाइल फोर्सेस ऑफ कंक्रीट सो फॉर दैट पर्पस इफ दे इफ यू आर बा इफ यू आर Friction forces, surface friction forces, and locking forces, adhesive forces, if they fail, so they basically introduce a kind of hook to the to these bars. So basically, that hooks what they did. They are introduced at the ends. So due to these hooks, the steel is not able to slip because they stop the slipping of the steel. And this hook is basically to steal the to slipping the edges ki over who slip who basically this hook ne kya ki they prevent it. this hook prevent the slippage of these uh, of these steel bars and now the steel is completely capable of attacking the tensile forces of the concrete okay so this was all about the hooks at that era but with the passage of time once technology become advanced and uh, they they produce and they're starting the deformed bars 
to the different bars kind of bars which has you can see you people can see the ribs on the steel surfaces these these are, these are called deformed bars so these ribs are basically designed they are called to design and what they did for example if i draw a section over here and uh, you can see the ribs like this kind of ribs you people can see so what what will happen the the stresses forces are you know, a kind of uh, a kind of bearing stresses is produced over here okay so basically due to this bearing stresses this bearing stresses the steel is uh, the tension force is transferred to the steel and then steel starting of taking those tension okay so this was the whole uh, mechanism that how uh, tension is from concrete is transferred to the steel and how steel taken that tension that what will what kind of forces are involved and how the the deform bars concept is produced what will uh, how at the at the initial stage of developing of concrete, how they tag those tensile forces through steel so you you will learn about i think you will learn about a lot of about uh, relevant to the bond that what is a bond and how these kind of things will be handled through uh, you can say how these can kind, of, kind of things will be handled through uh, ribs and kind of, kind of like so to hoax and from about that so basically this was all about uh, bond in bond mechanism bond history you know and uh, bond force based on simple cracks section we don't concern with proofs like like that uh, the one of the most important detail which is cutting a bending of bars we will learn about it inshallah uh, in mc karmic book i think they explain a little bit i think so mcgregor so what does mcgregor says in a reinforced concrete being the flexural compressive forces are resisted by concrete yeah same same thing which i will mention you jo basically jo compressive forces hoti hai which are They, they, they clearly say that these forces are resisted by concrete while the flexural tensile forces are provided by reinforcement uh, this, this is this sentence is very important they say that tensile stresses are forces is taken out by reinforcement in concrete for this purpose to exist okay agar aap ye assumption karte hain at the at the start of the lecture i will explain you when you are making you Whenever you are doing this assumption that uh, compressive forces is taken by the concrete while the tensile forces is taken by the reinforcement, if this property exists, if you if, if you if you making this assumption, your assumption will be true if if there must be a force transfer of bond. Your assumption will be true if there is bond. If there is no bond forces, there is no force transfer. You know, there will be no forces taken out by the steel reinforcement. So this means, if bond forces exist करें कि concrete में तो transfer होगी stresses की to the steel. और अगर bond forces exist नहीं करेगी, तो this means that there will be no transfer. Okay. So here you can see that this average bond force this is the this is the bond force average bond force it is equal to change in tensile stress in steel into diameter of the bar which is used in concrete divided by 4 into n ab dekhi l is the length of the steel okay so ab the average bond stress equals to ab this 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 thing is equals to F S two minus F S one. This means this is the change in tensile stress. This means that, for example, if you are a certain 
length of steel like this this is the certain length of steel uh, you this is the steel which for example you are using in a concrete uh, and you take a portion of the a portion of the steel having a length one one bar having a length of L. Now if if there is you can say there is a tensile force F is one. So on the other hand there is a tensile force F is two. So change in stress will be equal to F is one F is two minus F is one. So that change multiplied by the diameter of the bar divided by four into that length that portion length of bar gives you the average stress. Average average uh, bond force. So here you can see that the change in Fs means the change in tensile stress that for a certain or a small portion of bar length d is equals to 4 mu divided by d. This is the average so uh, bond stress bond force multiplied by 4 divided by dia bar. Okay. So this is true bond stress. This mu is true bond stress, not average bond stress. Okay. These are the bond stresses you can see when you are, whenever you are uh, ten, tensioning the steel in this direction, your bond forces will be in opposite direction. This is a very very important topic. Okay. That the bond forces will be in reverse direction of the tension forces because if you do not in reverse direction, then you can see the transfer of tension will. Uh, average bond stress I will explain you whatever uh, basically here we, we are going to uh, relate you can say uh, the average bond stress with the share okay so you must know about that average bond stress is equal to share divided by pi dv into jd jd is the lever arm okay this is the lever arm and what is lever arm you you will see in the designing of uh, uh, the, the flexure designing of the concrete member. Okay, so we have compression over here in this portion. This is neutral axis. This is compression, and we have steel here whose force is equal to a, a s into f y. Okay, so the distance between n these two guys is found to be lever arm which is, is equal to j d which is equal to j d so this is a lever arm okay so here you can see that shear shear divided by pi dv pi dv is the parameter of the one bar bar this is the bar parameter okay and multiply by j d uh, if you have for example number of bars then you have to uh, some of those parameters of those bars you have to this means summing okay if there is more than one bar the bar parameter pi db is replaced with the sum of the parameters so then this formula will be so if you have, if you ask about to calculate the average bond force you uh, and shear is given so you can use this formula and you can get the average shear uh, bond stresses we don't want to this is a kind of vibration you know uh, basically you no know, bond stresses and for out is yeah uh, I think I will jump to uh, Nielsen book in that uh, you can see that how uh, there are two basic types of uh, bond one is pull out and the other is split okay. failure this is bond strength and development length. okay so you must know about bond strength you know for reinforcing bonds in tension two types of bond failures have been observed there are two types of uh, two types of bond failure have been observed okay the one is the first is direct pull out and the other is split Direct pull out means that in that case you can say this uh, basically ye hota hai ke, uh, pura jo steel hota hai, jo concrete se nikhal jata hai. 
you can say, uh, which occurs when ample confinement is provided by the surrounding country. This means that your steel is not slippery chances. Your steel is confined. This means that your side cover, your stirrups, ties, adhesion, friction force is very high. Taken our, you can say that there is no chances of slipping of the steel, and due to that, you are whenever you are tensioning the steel, the, the, the whole steel is come out from the uh, burst out, you can say, from the concrete. And open uh, sack, uh, what is basically concrete, pure concrete, that is that is the direct pull out. A test होता है basically practically इसको perform किया जाता है जिसके जरिए से concrete की bond strength मालूम की जाती है। The other one is splitting of the concrete. Splitting of concrete means uh, in that case whenever your side covers confinement are not proper, you know they are not according to the code, you know they are not uh, you can say according to the code criteria and they are insufficient. So in that case you will see uh, on the on those sides of the beams uh, where main steel are used a kind of cracks over here okay that those cracks may be horizontal and those cracks may be in vertical direction like you can see in this figure this one okay so you will see this cracks will develop along the length of the bars are perpendicular to the bar these are the perpendicular so these are splittings. This is a horizontal splitting and this is a vertical splitting. So Aksar basically our uh, beam may say this like failures that due to insufficient of uh, insufficient of bottom cover, uh, center to center distance in between the bar. So if these cover criteria and the confinement criteria to these bars is not sufficient. Uh, you will see this kind of cracks in such kind of beams. So this is a kind of bond failure, okay? Splitting bond failure. So I will explain you about bond strength failures. Two types of failures: direct pull out and splitting out. Bond strength, uh, bond failure resulting from splitting of the concrete is more common in beams than direct pull out. Okay? This is a more certain because direct pull out is practically it is uh, impossible. Uh, basically. It may happen due to very heavy loading. Okay, heavy loading to which is also Otherwise, this kind of direct load failure uh, not will happen. Almost. This is the this is the type of failure which is almost in our common practice. So such splitting comes mainly from wedging action when the ribs of the deformed bars are against the concrete. So the reason I will explain you about of the splitting that improper concrete covers center to center distance and if you don't provide the, those kind of things so this kind of uh, splitting will occur so this was all about you know about bond okay bond kya hoti hai or bond ki characteristics kya hai bond failure kis tarah ki hoti hai or uh, this is MC Cormick book and MC Cormick also says that a basic assumption made for reinforced concrete design is that there must be absolutely no slippage of the bar in relation to the surrounding concrete. In other words, the steel and the concrete should be stuck together at bar so that they will act as a unit. If there is no bonding between the two materials and if the bars are not anchored in their ends, they will be full loose from the concrete. As a result, the concrete beam will act as an unreinforced member and will be subject to sudden collapse as the concrete cracks. It is obvious that the magnitude of the bond stress will change in reinforced concrete beam as the bending moment in the beam change. The greater the rate of bending moment change occurring location of high shear, the greater will be the rate of change. So this all those things which I will mention you says by the MC Cormick. MC Cormick this means that it is a kind of sticking in between a bond is a kind of sticking in between reinforcing and concrete okay and uh, 
they say is that there must be ample stacking of these two materials to each other. If they, if they do not exist in between, so you know you are born, you are uh, reinforced in sleep which will occur and what will happen, your beam will will behave like an unreinforced beam, okay, and they will bend. In this book, I will show you that how those slippages occurred and when one we provide once we provide those kind of bond forces and those anchorages, you know, or those hooks. So how those transport those forces are transferred to that uh, bars and then the bars and then the beam will not bend. So in that book, I will explain you this thing. Okay. What may not be so obvious is the fact that bond stresses are also drastically affected the development of ancient cracks in the concrete. Okay. Uh, at a point where a crack occurs all of the longitudinal tension will be resisted by the reinforcing bars. At, at a small distance along the bar, at a point away from the crack, the longitudinal tension will be resisted by both the bar and the uncracked concrete. In this small distance, there can be a large change in bar tension due to the fact that the uncracked concrete is in no resisting tension yep. surrounding the concrete which was zero okay this means okay uh, i will show you this means okay let's suppose you have a concrete uh, member okay uh, if you have a concrete member okay and uh, if we mostly see that this is the tension for example if it is a simply supported beam it is a simply supported beam uh, so the tension pairs will be this one okay this is your tension pairs okay this is your tension pairs so if this is a tension pairs if this is a tension pairs you know so you, we, we most of time we will see that there is a kind of cracks will develop over here so they say that whenever this crack is uh, happen this crack is occurred what will happen here is crack came on okay, at right toward the location of this crack the whole of the tensile forces is taken out by the by the steam not by the concrete because the concrete is almost crack but in between these two cracks in between in these two cracks if I assume that this is the X if I assume that this is the X, so the concrete is not cracked over here. So this means that here tension is basically the tension which is right over here is taken by both concrete and steel. Okay. So ye jo length hai na, ye length, ye both important. Hai. This length is very very important for us because here the total tension force developed over here. Osara, all of those tension is transferred to the steel in this length and this the, we have to design for this length that how much distance distance will be kept that the whole tension will be transferred to the steel this is a very very important uh, terminology okay and we, we will search for this distance okay so the basic uh, the basic meaning of this paragraph is that okay, uh, in the past it was common to compute the maximum theoretical bond stress at the point in members and compare them with the uh, certain certain experiments results here is this is the rev action you know these are the revs you can see these are the steel revs the pull is applied you know and the bearing forces are developed bearing stresses are developed which is taking those kind of pulling or you can say tensioning so I think so. I will explain all those uh, things which I will try to have. And uh, this is a kind of very important detail which I would like to explain. That this this is a kind of steel. This is steel. This is steel. So the concrete cover का जो होता है bond force के ऊपर बहुत effect होती है. ठीक है ना यहाँ पे अगर आप देखें तो you will see that the distance bottom cover. This is the bottom cover from the steel surface to the bottom uh, bottom cover is less than side cover because there is okay, the, the side cover from 
from this the surface of this steel to this edge. So this distance is more than this one. Okay. So bottom cover is this, then side cover and one half clear spacing. You know, this is the clear spacing between this this point to this point. This is the this distance from from the surface of this bar to the surface of this bar. This is the clear distance. Okay. So this distance is also greater than this one. So you will see that. Uh, the, you will see the cracks on the bottom surface of the concrete okay because the bottom cover is not M okay in this case you will see center to center distance is justified okay that is greater okay the bottom cover is less than center to center distance and the side cover as well side cover and bottom cover are equal and less than the center to center so you will see you will splitting or you will see the horizontal splitting and you will see the, the, the cracks on the bottom portion in horizontal direction okay. so cover on sides and bottom they are both sides and bottom are equal but less than one half of the center here you can see that center to center distance side cover as well as bottom cover both are less okay both don't justify the criteria of a ACI because SA there are certain criteria of ACI okay, how much we have to keep this distance this distance this distance and this distance how much we this is this is basically you must know about it this is a very very important uh, terminology you know and you must know about this kind of important importance because this is the bar so you know about this this is the bottom cover and this is the side cover and this is the center to center distance okay so this must be equal to uh, according to dv this must be equal to dv this must be equal to dv you know these are certain criteria of the sci you must know about these criteria and these these, these kind of criteria is also better defined in, in greker book i think so uh, they are effectively defined these uh, look this is a criteria uh, which is taken from this book also because this is your bar you know and these are your bottom cover side cover bottom cover side cover this is your center to center distance so here you can see side cover equals to bottom cover both less than half of the bar spacing half of the bar spacing you know here you can see bottom cover is less than the side cover as well as from those and here you can see that uh, your bottom cover side cover side cover and half of the bar spacing both less than the bottom cover bottom cover is justified over air but side covers and uh, the half of you know half of half center to center distance is less than the side cover so this is important these cover criteria is very very important and this it must be justified okay and uh, i will see you that uh, this is i will show you I will show you that how these criteria will be justified. No? Uh, if the bars are keeping keeping in two layers, so how much this the, the distance between these two layers that must be greater than or equal to dB diameter of this bar. Okay, the horizontal distance that is the clear spacing in a row between two successive bars must be greater than or equal to dB. Okay, uh, the clear cover. You know, here you can see. This is the clear cover you know clear cover this one this is the clear cover but remember that this clear cover is up to this distance okay you must know about the you must know about this clear covering criteria it is very very important for us to understand it completely okay you know that look look at this 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 is the side cover and this side cover is from the from the surface of this bar okay to the edge of this concrete okay this is the side cover and this must be greater than or equal to db and this one is also bottom cover this is your bottom cover this is your bottom cover and it must be greater than or equal to db okay and this is your side cover okay you must know about side cover because in the later stages i will use this red area i will not don't define those those these terms you must remember this and this is your clear distance okay this is your clear distance center to center not center to center distance. this is a clear distance in between the bars successive bars so these this this is basically 
uh, I will define you that what is case one and what is case two. But you must know the, these criteria. Yeah, how we how we justify these criteria? And how we uh, justify those bond criteria? So uh, uh, I will explain to these kind of uh, topics in later stages. Okay. So what I mean uh, what I mean here, okay, you must know about the bond. Okay. That that what are the factors at which bond uh, forces are depend. What are those factors at which bond forces are depend? Okay, so I think this is the full description about bond. At the later stages, I will define you uh, development. Okay, development length increase in splicing of the reinforcement. Until to this moment, I think it is sufficient in this lecture. And uh, I hope if you have any question, you can you may ask me uh, at my email. Phone and I will write those email and I will uh, I will deliver you that my email and my phone number. Uh, if you have any doubts, any questions, 